Hey everybody, this is Super Robot Head, and today I'm just doing a little retrospective on the Robots in Disguise 2001 toy line, aka Car Robots. We were having nostalgia talks about this line today, and with some friends of mine who I've been collecting with for about the same amount of time of over 20 years now. And I remember when this line first came out and we were talking about how much money we spent to get the Car Robots versions of these toys. And a lot of people don't realize that when this line came out or was announced to be coming out, people were super excited. The collectors, those who knew about the Japanese lore, because we were coming back to actually having vehicles and leaving the Beast era, which a lot of people did not like. I liked it, but I had to learn to like it. But overall, knowing that we were going to get cars again for Autobots made everything super happy for me anyway. So let's start off. So in Japan, in the Car Robots line, the first one that we got was Speed Breaker. Uh, Speed Breaker was a, uh, some people say Corvette, but he's not a Corvette, it's a Dodge Viper. Um, the decals were really nice. Nothing really was different from it when it got released in America. Pretty much everything was the same. The only, I think the only difference is they had an Autobot symbol on the hood where the Autobot symbol wasn't on the hood in the Japanese version. But I don't remember any stark differences between the two. And even when we got the Super Charge version or the Super Mode or X Mode, there was no difference in paint job either when you got the red version of the toy. Now the next one is going to be Mock Alert. Now when Mock Alert came out, he was pretty nice for a lot of people because he was a Lamborghini. And in the mind, of course, everybody was wondering if we were ever going to get Sunstreaker and uh, Sideswipe, which we did, of course, in OFTCC. Um, but this one I actually like because when you transform him, the feet actually become like seats. And I always thought that was pretty cool. Now, most of the deco of him was clear, whereas the American version, which was known as Prowl, everything was kind of a smoky gray and the kind of clear looking weapons became opaque. Also, on the hood of the car, you got an Autobot symbol. But it still retained the same Japanese writing on the side. Um, it still had the rubber tires, which was also very cool. Some say the rubber on the American toys have a tendency to crack, but I still have rubber tires on mine and they haven't cracked on the American version. Same thing with Super Mode. In Super Mode, there was really not much difference between the two in America or Japan between Prowl and Mock Alert. Now, my favorite, which was the first one I finally got, was Car Robot's uh, Wild Ride. And Wild Ride, man, that was a pretty cool looking mode, car mode. You're talking about, uh, I think this was a Mercedes-Benz SUV with very nice detailing. Headlights, tail lights, a vacuumized engine, you know, the weapons were nice and sharp looking. I mean... Even though he was asymmetric like most of them are, this one always intrigued me the most of how he looked in general. And I really enjoyed the toy. Now the American version, it's not as nice of a vacuumized paint job. The details are kind of shrunken out and plus I think the weapon is slightly molded different. Um, also he loses the tail lights um, and a lot of the paint job is a little bit different not so much that you should really have to get the Japanese version but if you really want those car details I definitely would go with wild ride on that now when it comes to the super mode I never really cared for the color scheme either but they follow the same trait of losing a lot of the paint job that it had and everything like that um you know as far as details so overall mm, if you pick them up, you're not going to really matter which version you get. You'll be fine with that. Now here comes uh, Wrecker Hook, which in America he was known as Toy Line. The biggest difference in the two was the size of the Autobot symbol. Now this is where it gets into repaint hell. So Wrecker Hook is a repaint of Machine Wars Hoist and Hubcap. Now the American version, which is known as uh, Toy Line, came with Decepticon Skyfire, which was a repaint 
of Machine Wars Thundercracker. Now, you didn't get this in the Japanese release, but in the U.S. release, this was a two-pack. And it actually, you could get this two-pack for like $12.99. Nice. Not a bad deal. I did own this one as well. Now, the next one we get to is Indie Heat. Now, with Indie Heat, you're going to notice that there's not too much of a difference between this and the uh, American version called Skid Z, with the exception of the extra details that say Indie Car and things are kind of, those tamples are removed. And I believe the purple is a little bit darker. But of course, he does always have that Mirage look to him. And a lot of the features almost remind me of some of the Japanese Brave facial features. That's why I kind of like this toy when I used to own him. And I think I actually own a copy of him somewhere, in, of course, in there. And this is Skid Z, which has the missing temples. But he's just a repaint of uh, Machine Lords Mirage and Prowl. And he came with uh, Wind Shear, which is a repaint of Machine Wars, Megatron, and Megaplex. Again, the same price point, not a bad two-pack. Now we get to the Spy Changers. And no, I did not own any of the Spy Changers. So I don't know who's who. Uh, but if you got the Japanese version, they all came in a six-pack. Um, again, these were all from Machine Wars. Um, you know, the little, with the GoBots or whatever they were called. Um, I'm just going to run out of names. They're out of line. I'm sorry, but, you know, you got the Japanese version of Art Fire, which was Hot Shot. Um, you had the Japanese ver version, which was Eagle Killer, and his name was Rev in America. Wars, which was a weird name, is actually spelled uh, W.A.R.S. Uh, X Car in Japan was Crosswise. Ox, which was a truck probably a few minutes ago, was also known as Ironhide. This guy here was Counter Arrow, aka known as Mirage. Um, I never really bothered with these. Like, I don't like the Minicon. I just, I knew what they were. It's kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know, I don't really need them. So I never bought them, never got into them. Of course, you know, it's X car and everything. I think for smaller kids, this was pretty good because they fit that 164 scale. But now nah, I wasn't with it. So starting with this one, we got J5, which is JRX. Now this is another one of the new modes that came out. And in America, he's known as Real Spike. To be honest with you, I would go with the Hasbro versions. The paint apps on the Japanese version were weird and sometimes sloppy. And there's some fixes that they made in America which were a little better than they did in Japan. And of course, uh, here's a rapid run uh, you know, which he's projected a little differently in the Japanese version of Car Robots. And he's known as J7. You know, he's another part of the train. Again, I would go with the Hasbro versions just for the paint apps and a few fixes that they made over the Takara version. So some people say the Takara version is better. I beg to differ on that. And of course, the last one is J4, which is Midnight Express. You know, again, I'm going to tell you this from experience after owning both. <laughs> the American versions actually are better because a lot of clear parts that are on any of those toys are actually made with a more opaque plastic. So keep that in mind if you're collecting these. Personally, I wouldn't step back on these, but I know some people that will. And of course, here's the combined mode. I like the name JRX. Um, it looks pretty good. I, I never really thought that this was a great combiner, but for what it's worth getting new molds, and that are turning into vehicles. It was a lot of fun. It was difficult to make, but a lot of fun to own and you know, but it's just something I personally would not go back and get. Now one set I still wouldn't mind getting my hands on is the Build set or Build King set. Now the Build King set starts here with Build Boy and you know, he's just orange. Whereas with Wedge, there's some silver bits. There's some realistic paint going on with the Japanese, I mean the American versions, and you'll see that as we go through. Now this is the red guy, which is High Tower in Japan, he's known as Bill Cyclone. This is Bill Cyclone, because they're more solid, deep colors, whereas America, they're kind of two-toned and a little bit muted. And of course here's High Tower, which is the RID version, but it's not much difference, you get everything the same. 
Same thing with Bill Typhoon. And a lot of these names kind of remind me of the brave, uh, the one from uh, that show. It turns into the, the build. I forget his name. Anyway, they do kind of remind me of those names. And of course, here's the uh, heavy load version, which is the American version. Pretty neat. And then finally, we get to the end where we get uh, this is Build Hurricane. Now, he had the oddest name in America because in America, he became Grimlock. And all of them would form Build King. And the Build King gift set actually was pretty good. But we never got a gift set like that in America. Now we come to the big boys. Ultra Magnus, so in Japan, he's known as God Magnus, which he is pictured here. And, of course, Fire Convoy. Now, in America, he's Ultra Magnus and, of course, Optimus Prime as a fire truck. The biggest differences between these toys, actually, starting with Optimus Prime, is the paint job. Now, the paint job on the Japanese version is a deeper red. There's no Autobot symbol on the side. The missiles are different. The way that the missiles look are slightly different. Um, there's some silver paint when you turn them into the full mode in the crest, which is supposed to be the Matrix. I think they kind of filled it in on the American version. It's kind of a hole on the Japanese version. But I own both, and I'll be honest with you, the story about the tires cracking, I don't know about that. I mean, there's, that's, you know, that's, they, they're going to crack on both. There's no difference in rubber on either version, so don't follow that nonsense. People don't know what they're talking about. And the first edition Fire Convoy came in vehicle mode. And then the second version came in robot mode. And of course in America he came in vehicle mode as well. But he was facing the opposite direction of the Japanese toy. I've owned like three of these. <laughs> so I know what I'm talking about. I own the first release which was in vehicle mode. Uh, the second release I own two. Because I had to get that later on because I sold my first release. And then, of course, I had the American release. Uh, I would say it doesn't matter which version you buy. It doesn't matter if you buy it from someone that you it's used. Just do your own inspection and ask questions because you're mainly going to be getting it off of eBay or off of uh, trade groups on Facebook or other means where you trade. Now, this one, I don't know how much this is worth now. In the year 2000, when you looked up the toys under Transformers 2000, which is the easiest way to search for car robots, this bad boy was $999. This is the black Lucky Draw version of Fire Convoy. It is a beauty. Now we go to uh, thighs all the way up to here. God Magnus or Ultra Magnus. And the difference between God Magnus and Ultra Magnus is the Autobot symbol on the side of the vehicle mode. And I think the gray is a little more silver looking due to the paint job. I think I can't remember because yeah, I own both of these. And of course, you all know that Ultra Magnus and the Earth Rise and Siege, I mean, Kingdom and Siege Line gets this inspiration from this. But man, let me tell you something. This is one weird, fugly looking robot. His whole purpose is a vehicle and to merge with Fire Convoy. And this is the American version because he doesn't have the shiny head on the crest. That's the God motif. I said that's how you can really set, know the difference between the two. He's got the gold Autobot symbol on the head. The colors are a little bit different, but not much. You could buy either one. They function the same. And, of course, they form Super Fire God Convoy, which will fall. This is not intended to keep in this mode. I've done it hundreds of times, and it's never, ever going to stand up on its own because he got a large chest. And you're putting weapons on top. It's it's just to look at and, you know, put it back and just say, okay, don't do this again. Because if you leave it on the shelf, it's going to hurt people. It's going to hurt other toys. It will fall because it wasn't designed to stay that way. I don't know. And that's for the American version as well. It's no different. It's just too heavy of a toy. And if you were in Japan, you could get the TRU set which came with the you know the god sword or the max sword or whatever you want to call it and that's the only way you can get the sword now this is the encore release which was terrible by the way don't buy the encore release but there is a special edition tru version that comes in a very similar box 
The only difference is, is that I think believe on the inside, God Magnus and Fire Convoy are the clear versions. I've seen this. I know somebody that owned this. It's nice, but I don't like clear. You know, it doesn't really resonate with me. So I didn't buy this. At the time, in like 2000, 2001, this would set you back about 300 bucks. And here's a picture of it from the inside. And I mean, you literally had to, if you really wanted to complete, uh, basically car robots, because we didn't get everything released in uh, R.I.D., you had to buy this because you would need to get the sword to go with this guy. This is Brave Maximus. And he's missing a lot of stuff. Uh, he's missing guns. He's missing like the car that rolls, you know, that comes with him. He doesn't come with the sword either. So he's kind of like a bare bone, bare bones Fortress Maximus. And he ain't even uh, not Brave Maximus. What's the other guy's name? Um, his brother. He's not even him. He's just his own. He's really just Fortress Maximus without a lot of stuff. He was intended to come to America, but he never did. I really, if this is your completist, don't buy this because you're not going to get everything. You're probably going to pay too much and you could have spent your money on something else. Um, you know, so pass on that. Now we come to the Predacons or the Decepticons. And of course, you know who this is. This is a Gusher, which is a repaint of Transmetals to Spitor. Um, what can I say? They just function the same. They're just a different paint job. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, just a different paint job from Spitor. And in America, of course, uh, Goosher is known as Slapper. Yeah, makes sense. And this guy is known as uh, Guido, or Gildo. And I know him as Dark Scream. I always thought the name was cool. I love the paint job on this. And also, if you bought the three pack in America, they're basically the same. They're really not much different. Of course, he's a repaint of, uh, I forgot this guy's name for the life of me. But yeah, he's a repaint of that guy from Transmetals 2. So I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. I don't have time to look. And then here's Gaskunk. And Gaskunk is the same. <laughs> Gaskunk, only difference is it's like gas then space skunk. Um, it's the same toy. Like literally, if you bought the American version, like if you couldn't find this, you're you're not missing out on anything. It's, it's it's exactly the same. I think the paints, the black is a little more of a brownish hue, a little bit, but all intents and purposes they're the same. Nothing to talk about here. Then of course is my man, Skybite, and in Japan he's known as Gale Shark. Now I'm not gonna lie, I always loved the repaint of Transmetal to uh, or is it Transmetal um, Cyber Shark because. Let's face it, Cybershock wasn't that great looking, but this paint job, it looks like he's wearing a hat. Like he's wearing like a big, tall hat. But other than that, I always loved the colors on him. I always thought he was fantastic. And of course, there he's a repaint of this guy, who always looked plain to me, green. And yeah, they took some liberties with the colors, but you can see the differences. Now we get to what I call the Combatracons. Yes, they're a group versus Ruination, which were Decepticons. Now, you know the story? Scourge, or AKA Black Convoy, is actually their leader, and they're all part of the same frac faction, which is the Combatricons. And this is the, uh, I forgot his name in Japan. Oh, Green Jeeper. And his American name is Roll Bar. And they're pretty much about the same. Differences in paint here and there. And of course, their Shuttler, which he was a white repaint of blast off and uh, he had the combatricon symbols on his wings where if you had the american version he's known as uh mover and he had decepticon symbols that's the only difference now the biggest difference is going to be with danger danger because he's brown you know to kind of match the motif of the entire version of baldigus and you know, he's got the Combatricon, which is an upside down Autobot 2, G2 Autobot 2, G2 Autobot symbol. His repaint in America was known as Armor High, and he was blue, you know, with the same details. And of course, he has Decepticon symbol. All of them came with guns. And then we get to, uh, I think his name was Hepter. 
<laughs> Again, he's got the you know same weapons and same color scheme as uh, Rotor. The only difference is he's Rotor is a little more bluer and has a Decepticon symbol instead of the uh, again G2 upside down Autobot symbol. Um, they are very similar in paint. You know, I I keep thinking that they were so different, but now that I'm looking back at them, like how did the same? And now here comes the leader, which is Doyle Railer, and you know he's an olive green. You know more he everything kind of works in his favor. I love the colors on him. You know he's still you know uh, I forget the leader to the, the Combaticons, but he's just a repaint of him. Does the exact same thing as the original uh, toy that it was repainted from, and of course this is Mega Octane. Now he has the gray that's very similar to the paint scheme that would be on a G1 Bruticus. And I always said that this toy, when you put the American version together, they look just like G1 Bruticus with different colors. They, but it's it's a ugly, it doesn't match the cartoon. And I know kids are probably wondering why. Now if you got lucky and you live in Japan, you got the box set. And the box set was pretty cool. Comes with all the weapons. I don't think they came separate. I'm not remembering 100 bits sure. But here is Valdigas. Now, this is how you look in the cartoon. The upside down Generation Autobot 2 symbol. This is how you're supposed to look. And this is the colors that match the cartoon. But when we get to the American version, you know, for you kids out there who grew up and this was your show, y'all basically got a funky repaint of G1 Bruticus, man. Because he got the gray parts and, you know, he's... He doesn't match the cartoon at all whatsoever. I don't know why they took this Art of Liberty a, a strain away, but that's okay. And of course, later on in the still R.I.D. line, you got the Walmart camel, ice camel or gray camel version of, uh, you know, Ruination, which was pretty good. Now we get to my man. All right, collectors, do you remember trying to pick him up in round 2001? I think he run you about a hundred dollars. Cheapest I seen him go was like 75, 80 bucks, if you're lucky. This is the one that everybody wanted. Black Convoy. That's right. And man, that sword is so cool. A little sharp. A little sharp. Not mainly sharp, but it's clear. You can see through it. He's got the correct weapons that shoot off that rocket into stratosphere hell. Uh, everything was just nice, deep, dark, no extra tampos, no Decepticon symbols anywhere, just the evil black oil tanker that was a repaint of G2 Laser Optimus Prime. And I own him and I still have him, and I've had this toy since 2003. I don't have all the parts, but I got him. And let's get to Scourge. Now, Scourge, they took some liberties, they changed the sword, made it a little more opaque. I think you can't make the weapon shoot off as far. I forgot what else was missing. The paints are slightly different, but he's got a ton of Decepticon symbols on him, and he's not a Decepticon. He's a Combatricon, the leader of the Combatricons. They're, they're their own faction. I have to theorize this in the Japanese version. But still a worthy pickup if you could not get Black Convoy. And now we get to the leader of everybody, Gigatron, a.k.a. Megatron. Now, with this release, Gigatron was, of course, a six-changer who turned into a car, a two-headed dragon, or a four-headed dragon, a flying spaceship, and a jet. Every time I look at him, I see a lot of Dino Geist from Exciser. That's he just like a lot of, somehow, even though he's not as, I don't know, he just gives me that Dino Geist vibe with his transformation. This is a cool toy, even though most of these do look like fan modes. Um, if you want to know, Megatron, the American version in R.I.D., actually does not use the original Gigatron mode. And for good reason, as you find out later, I think they scrapped this because if you tried to do the extra modes, it would break. That's the mode change. There is an engineering change when it gets to Devil Gigatron. And Devil Gigatron is also known as Galvatron in America. But if you bought the American version of Megatron, he could do all nine mode, ten modes actually. 
So you had the two-headed dragon, the four-headed dragon. You also had like another, I don't know what the top, I always forgot what the top one was. But you could turn into like an elephant. <coughs> you could turn into like a, another type of dragon. And all because in the torso, there was like a different transformation mechanism that was added. And it's added onto the Megatron. So if you buy the American version of Megatron, you could do all these. You don't have to buy Devil Gigatron because you could do every single one of these modes. Like the one in the middle, bottom, kind of on the bottom row in the middle, that was the one that was crazy. I'm like, that's supposed to be an elephant, but he's supposed to be an elephant. And it's it's a cool toy to be able to do these extra things. And I believe if you do have the original Gigatron from uh, Car Robots, if you try to do some of these, it could break. It doesn't work. I've tried it. I'll tell you, I tried it for you. Don't do it. Just get this version or get the American version of for Gigatron, which is Megatron. And basically, this was a cool toy. Just he was just cool. This is the robot mode. His presence was always the coolest to me. And back in my metal. And there's no difference between this and the American version, by the way, either, as far as Devil Gigatron and Galvatron. So the next one we got is, of course, these are later on in the line of R.I.D., uh, which is the unreleased Megatron and Starscream. Uh, from G2, which later on showed up in Beast Wars the second as BB and Starscream with just some slight changes. Um, I got this somewhere. I don't know how much it costs. I don't remember, but I probably picked them up just so when I worked at KB Toys. Now the next one here is Mirage GT, which is a repaint of Beast Machines via Con Mirage, and it came in a three pack. Uh, the next one is Night Cruise, which is a repaint of Beast Machine Spy Streak, which I never found Spy Streak. I don't even know it. I didn't even know it existed until they got this guy. And then finally, we got Scavenger, which is a repaint, the same of Beast Machine Scavenger. Uh, this is not one of my favorite toys. It's ugly to me. And now we get to Stormjet, which Stormjet <laughs> was kind of like the, you know, jet fire for R.I.D., if you want to call it that. Actually, I like the paint mold in this one. And then, of course, you had Geaxis, which is was this repaint. And all of them are a repaint of Beast Machines via Con Jetstorm. Then we get to this guy, Cryotech. He was also in the R.I.D. line for America only. Now, I'm going to tell you, some people will say, well, they saw him in Beast uh, Wars, you know, Transmetals or Transmetals 2. You did not get this. This is R.I.D., so don't lie. Don't tell stories. This is R.I.D. And when this came out in R.I.D., I didn't buy him. I wish I did, but I didn't buy him because I own the Megatron. I didn't really want a blue repaint, but I should have picked him up. Now, I think this is Megabolt. I have him in a closet somewhere. Um, he turns into a tank head thing. And then there's the Megatron Megabolt, which does the same. And you're supposed to be able to put this on top of Brave Maximus. But again, they didn't release Brave Maximus in America. Screw you, Hasbro. And then, of course, there was the Walmart. I think this was a Walmart exclusive. It was a yellow uh, repaint of Landfill or Bill King, which was all yellow. This is the ugly one. The best one is the Target one that turned that was repainted the Devastator. And at the end of the line, we got Air Attack Optimus Prime from the giant version from Beast Machines, but he was put into the R.I.D. line. My friend still has this to this day. And this toy is, even with the clear plastic, it's held up nicely. Not my cup of tea, but my friends at Beast Wars Collective. And this toy is hot. It still looks good to me. And then we come to the Walmart. Uh, this was uh, Axer, who's a repaint of G2 Road Pig. And there's some slight retooling, I think. And he has like a light up weapon. You hit the little button, it lights up. And of course, here's side, R.I.D. Sideways, who turns into an that fast looking motorcycle and he was a repaint of G2 Road Rocket. I love this toy. This toy, he always had that like, I used him as like my ninja when I had my, you know, when I played my toys. I don't play with my toys anymore. Um, now we get on to Decepticon Bludgeon, which is a repaint of G2 Hero Megatron. I did not buy these. I should have bought them. I don't know how much they're worth. I think they might be worth some money. But I don't really look for these. 
And then the last one we have here is uh, Destructicon Scourge, which was a repaint of G2 Hero Optimus Prime. Again, I didn't buy this because I already had Black Convoy. So I didn't think I really needed to get this, but I think he goes for some money. I'm not sure. You know, it's entirely up to you to look for him on eBay if you want. So overall, that's about a nutshell of the entire line. If I missed anything, it's because it's not really important. It's just more repaints, you know, of like spy changers or anything like that. My take on this line in the beginning, I was excited when it first came out. And I did drop a lot of money on the car robots versions because they were hard to get and you know you had to even your searches had to, you had to search for Transformers 2000 to really find them because a lot of retailers were kind of hard to type in car robots and you get carrots most of R.I.D. at the end of it when I got into Armada Micron Legend I realized that a majority of the line was mostly the Autobots getting new modes and most of the Predacons Decepticons getting a hellish amount of repaints they reused a lot of molds for this line, but it's probably one of the most economical lines that Hasbro ever made because of the fact that they didn't have to do a whole lot of stuff. They had like maybe 35% of the line was new molds and the rest was just repaints. And you can market them as so and make your money because all you got to do is just repaint them. You don't have to go out and hire engineers to make new molds. So all in all, for me, the Toy Life R.I.D. was pretty cool. But going into the, the Unicron Trilogy, that was, to me, a breath of fresh air. What are your thoughts? I know for a lot of people, this was your version of G1. For me, this was a reinvention of G1 because I was 27, 28 years old when this came out. Uh, but leave your thoughts down in the comments below. How did you feel about the toy line? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Again, my name is Super Robot Ed. I thank you for all the new subscribers, all the ones that left, all the ones that came back. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great night. Have a great day. More to come real soon.